In this video, you will see how I make these two Vietnam bells out of four coins. I did speed up the video, that way it's a little more convenient to watch and it won't take as long. Um, both coins were made with two coins. I'm sorry, both bells were made with two coins and uh, both bells were powder coated and that process is in the video. I hope you enjoy. Of course, the first step is to punch a hole in the center. Um, this is the self-centering punch from Legacy Brand Tools. I really enjoy their tools. They make a great product. If you need to get something, go hit them up on their Etsy account. It's ever, worth every penny. Now one of the biggest and most important thing to do when making these coin bells out of copper coins is anneal, 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 anneal. Heat this bad boy up and cool it. It's not going to hurt it. It's copper. I got this thing cherry red one time. It's never affected the detail for me. You just make sure to heat it up and cool it. And then quench it into some water. That way you don't burn yourself. And if you want to know where to get this torch, they sell them at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're roughly about $50 to $60 depending on tax and where you're located. They come very handy with this higher temperature for, for these coppers. I used a propane and it takes almost twice as long to heat up a coin. Of course, the next step is to get your doming block. I got this at Harbor Freight. Paid like 40 bucks for it. You can get the 25% coupon online or 20% 20, 20 coupon online. It comes in very handy. Make sure the detail faces down. That way when you make your bell, everything shows outwards. You don't want to bend your coin the wrong way and screw up your, your bell at the beginning. After using my doming block, I also like to use my 17 degree dies from Legacy Brand Tools uh, to get a little more of a curve on it right before I start Swedish wrapping. Um, you want to make sure you center that coin. Uh, every so often you can see I keep having to center it because it wants to sometimes pull to one side a little more than the other. Once again, don't forget, anneal, anneal, anneal. Keep that copper soft while you work it. That way the process goes a lot easier. Now it's time to start Swedish die wrapping. These are my two dies. I'm gonna start off with first, one's a 1.4, the other one's a 1.1 starting off. Uh, make sure to use faucet. I use any type of grease will work. I use faucet grease just to help get it going right off the back. It helps uh, make that coin slide a lot easier. 
the coin too is I'm not wrapping it right now is just because the coin can be reduction down a little bit before it hits the detail so I'm getting that little bit done before I, I wrap it Don't be stingy on grease. Use plenty of it. The more you use, the better, I think. It'll keep the metal-on-metal metal contact from to a minimum and keep from damaging your dies while using them. All right, now it's time to Swedish die wrap it. Now, a lot of people like to do about 20 wraps. I'm not stingy with Teflon at all. I buy it by the box, so I don't really care how much I use. Being copper is tougher than silver. I tend to wrap everything 30 times. And also, that's just me not being stingy. The more out in there, the better it protects, in my opinion.
One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video is I'm not really concerned about the detail on the inside of the bell. The detail on the outside of the bell is the most important part because I do intend to powder coat the bell both on the outside and inside. So any little squi squishing of the lettering in the inside of the bell is I'm not concerned of because it will be a nightmare to try to pick every little detail out after the bell's put together. All right, now at this point, what I'm doing is I'm trying to match the top of the tip bell to the bottom of the bell. And I'll, on this type of coin, whenever you turn this coin into a bell, one side of the lettering is going to be upside down. That's actually the same thing for rings, too. You're always going to have some letters upright. You're always going to have some letters downright. But the cool part is this coin is going to be the same image on both sides that I'm using. So after I turn into the bell, I'm going to have one side of the lettering that's going to match up with the other. So you have Vietnam vet and the year. It's going to be facing the exact same direction. That way, if you grab the bell and lift it upside down, it'll look perfect. And then, of course, on the other side is similar. So it comes in handy to make sure you match them up. All right, now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting a Swedish die wrap, turning it upside down, and I'm going to be using a cone to help spread out the bottom of the bell. That way it gives it a better look. Uh, it comes in handy to be, be able to turn those upside down. That way also the, the, the cone goes further down and gives more of a curve out on the bottom. And if it ain't enough and I don't like it, what I'll do is go to a little bit bigger of a die and see if the coin will fit. And then, of course, I'll push it even further down. That way it goes good spread on the bottom. A good thing to have too would be a disc sander, which you're fixing to see. It comes in handy to getting those edges nice and clean before soldering. Just be careful, it does get hot. All right, now it's time to solder the two pieces together. The good thing about using that sander on the disc, it helps get that surface nice and flat. And that's what you want, nice and flat. The other thing too is when, when soldering, when you put the flux down, you don't need a whole lot. It takes very little flux to work on this uh, for the solder. Now, sometimes when you're soldering, the solder will actually draw outside the bell. Don't be concerned. You can get like a little brush and kind of sweep it flat. And after you get it flat, take a little sandpaper and just slowly go over it until you finally get down back to the copper or get down to the base material. And that should, that's no big concern, especially when I'm when you're powder coating a bell like I'm doing in this video. I'm not really worried about too much solder coming out. I mean, if it's a little bit, it's not a big deal. I mean, if it's a lot, I'm going to scratch it out. Solder, when soldering, it will draw toward the heat. So you'll notice I'm, I'm as I solder, my my torch is on one side and my my solder is on the other. All right, this little tool I have right here, I made it myself. All it is is a bolt and a rubber bushing for a door stopper. You can make them real easy. It costs about three bucks to make. Comes very handy. Of course, a pick comes in handy too. You can buy them at Harbor Freight. They sell them in a pack of four for like two bucks. Another thing you can buy is this little puncher right here. You can, I use it to help punch the, the starter hole for when I drill my hole. And you can see I just basically put it dead center, spin the bell, make sure it looks about center. I just eyeball it and I just tap it. That way when I drill with the drill here, it just goes a lot easier and I don't have to worry about it walking over.
Now one thing to know, the top of my bell is called a clasp. Uh, it's basically you use it for bracelets or little necklaces, but when you're installing them, they're a little too short. So what I do is I drill out the inside just a little bit, kind of thin the metal down. That way it makes it a little easier for once I push it through, it kind of has a, a tight fit, but not too tight because you can break them real easy. Right after I drill it out and get it where it fits just right, I'll actually pull out this stuff you're fixing to see. It's called a uh, epoxy putty. It cures within about 20 minutes. And what I'll do is I'll put a little hook on the inside of, it, of each bell, and uh, which I'm doing right now. And I basically kind of extend the loop out a little bit more. And then I put the putty in there and I pack it all the way around. That way it makes a secure fit in there to help hold, help hold the hook down, the loop in, but also keep, keep that little hook right here you see the little hook it'll keep it basically lined up and nice and straight facing right straight down and of course right now you can also hear my eight month old he's having a blast he's helping me record this and uh i don't feel like changing it i like hearing his voice on here so <laughs> it's pretty funny now this is the stuff i was talking about it's called epoxy putty it cures in 20 minutes. It's real easy to work with. All you, I mean, it stores pretty easy. You just tear out how much you need and just mix it up. And then, of course, you take uh, this is one of my picks here. I, it's a little angled, and I just pack it around real nice and neat and uh, work, work it in there, work it tight into the little grooves. That's the best way. And then slowly scrape out all the excess that you don't need because you don't want too much in there, but you also don't want too little in there. All right, now that we're back, um, I did cut away for a minute. That way you didn't have to watch me put all the putty in the inside. The putty is now sat for about 20 minutes. Now I'm fixing to start powder coating. I got several different options of powder coating. I like playing around with different types. So I got, you can see I have a clear glow in the dark. Uh, and then of course I have some chrome black, red, tractor green. And I'm thinking, you know, tractor green will look good. And then of course I have some blue that always works really good with any bell I make. And uh, so I just figure out which one I want first and I'm keeping the little jars proportioned out because you don't need a lot when powder coating. This particular method I'm using is called uh, the brush method. Uh, basically, it's just a wire shoved through the brush and as you dip it, the wire will just as the regular way with the powder coating, it just sent it positively charges the powder. But this way I can control actually how much powder is coming out. And uh, I always make sure I tap it too, because sometimes you get a little too much or a little beat up in a certain spot. Get a little tap and kind of gets that little extra off. And I'll set it aside and hang it. Also, I don't like powder on my little hooks on the top, so I'll take keep a little fine little brush, brush them off. Make sure it not, you know everywhere you don't want powder coat, just brush it off. Real easy to sweep it off. But and if you mess up, you can always recoat it. And as a safety precaution, please be very careful. You don't want to touch the positive lead wire on that brush, and you don't want to touch touch the negative lead wire. You will shock yourself, and it will hurt. It, it, it can mess you up pretty quick or scare the living snot out of you. All right, now that I have both bells ready, I'm gonna stick it in the oven and I set my oven at 350. At 350, the, the powder will start flowing and once it starts flowing, I'll pull it out and start sanding the details. Once I start sanding the details, I'll make all the little details pop out where I need it. The little sand uh, filing brushes, I buy them at Walmart for a dollar. They're pretty cheap, and so I'm not worried about them. They're, they're very little expense. Once you sand the details out, what I like to do is also put it back in the oven and get all the, the powder to flow again that way it gets rid of my little scratches that are on the powder coat and then i'll put a pull it back out and then i'll put additional coat on top of it of clear powder coat to protect it all and then i'll put it in for the final cure all right now uh at this point i've already actually uh 
uh, got the powder to flow. Now here's the second coat of clear powder coat. This one glows in the dark. I thought it'd be fun to use. So, but you can see I'm covering the whole bell all over and I'm just getting it a good protective layer. All right, at this point, I've actually already fully cured the powder coat. I already stuck, I got the powder to flow, and then I turn around and I put it at 400 degrees and I let it sit for 15 minutes. It's, it's recommended, it says 10 minutes, but I always do 15 minutes. It's not gonna hurt it. Uh, so you can overcook powder coat, but I've noticed on my oven at extra five minutes doesn't hurt it at all. Um, of course, now you see me putting the little dong inside the bell. I use those little needle needle pliers right there to help bend my metal that remember that little piece i stuck out earlier that was a little extra long it comes in handy for this part it allows it to be a lot easier to work with well thank you for sitting through and watching my video uh here's some pictures of the final results of both bells uh they've already been completely cured they're ready for sale uh, I make them as people order them for me. So if you're interested, just give me a holler and I'll be happy to sell you one. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for future videos.